Welcome to our latest video on the reactions of copper 2 plus and cobalt 2 plus. This video is suitable for A level students. By the end of this video lesson, you should be able to describe the reaction that takes place between CuH206 2 plus and aqueous sodium hydroxide and be able to write an ionic equation for this reaction. You should also be able to describe the reactions that take place between CuH206 2 plus and ammonia solution and CuOH2 H2O4 and ammonia solution and be able to write ionic equations for these reactions. And finally, you should understand the idea of ligand exchange and how this can lead to a change in coordination numbers as exemplified by the reactions of CuH2O6 2 plus and COH2O6 2 plus with concentrated HCl. Now, in our previous video lessons, we've looked at the colour in transition metal ions and complexes. And we've learnt that transition metal complexes are nearly always coloured, with almost every possible colour being observed in the wide range of complexes that exist. We've also stressed that it's the formation of the complex which leads to the colour, and in the absence of any ligands around the metal ion, the compound would be colourless. Now during these video lessons we've looked at octahedral complexes such as FeH206 2 plus which is pale green and CuH206 2 plus which is blue and also tetrahedral complexes such as CuCl42 minus which is yellow stroke green and CuCl42 minus which is blue. Now in our previous video lessons, we looked at why these transition metal complexes are coloured. For example, copper sulphate is blue because of the presence of CuH206 2 plus. And the reason that this exhibits a blue colour is because the ligands, the water molecules, surround the transition metal iron and repulsion exists between the ligands electrons and the transition metal ions electrons. And this causes the 3D orbitals to split in terms of energy, with three orbitals having a lower energy and two orbitals having a higher energy. Now the reason this leads to a blue colour being observed is because visible light is absorbed and an electron can be promoted from a lower D level to a higher D level. And the frequency of visible light that is absorbed with this complex corresponds to light in the red end of the spectrum. So in the case of this complex, yellow light is absorbed and blue light is reflected because the color that you see is the color not absorbed. So it's absorbing from the red end of the spectrum and blue light is therefore being reflected and that's why you observe a blue color. Now for the WJC exam, you only have to explain how color arises in octahedral complexes. Now the color of a transition metal complex depends on the nature of the metal ion, its oxidation state, and the nature of the ligand detached. And all of these affect the size of the energy gap between the d orbitals, and therefore the amount of energy required to promote an electron from the lower to higher d orbitals. Now this is because it's the repulsion between the ligands electrons and the transition metal ions electrons that cause this energy gap. Now, in our previous video lessons, we've also learned that evidence for these DD level transitions comes from absorption spectroscopy. And in these spectrums here, you can see that blue light is being reflected as there's no absorption occurring in the blue end of the spectrum. And light from the red end of the spectrum is being absorbed. Now, when we change the ligands, what's happening is we're changing the D level splitting and therefore absorption is occurring at a different frequency and wavelength. 
Now, the ammonia ligands in the ammonia complex CuNH3-4H2O2-2+, cause a bigger 3D splitting. And this means that light of higher energy and frequency and lower wavelength is absorbed. So, from this, we have to remember that when we swap ligands in a complex, we are changing the DD level splitting energy and therefore the frequency and energy of light that's being absorbed and therefore the colour of the complex. Now when you carry out chemical reactions that involve ligands swapping, so in this case we are swapping water molecules for ammonia molecules, it's called ligand exchange. And ligand exchange can cause changes in colour for complexes and it's also possible for ligand exchange reactions to cause a change in the shape of a complex. Now in this video we're going to look at different examples of reactions that involve ligand exchange with cobalt 2 plus complexes and copper 2 plus complexes. So now let's look at the reaction of aqueous copper 2 plus ions and aqueous sodium hydroxide. So if we put a few drops of copper 2 plus into a test tube and add a few drops of aqueous NaOH, we form a pale blue precipitate. And if we then add excess aqueous NaOH, this pale blue precipitate does not dissolve. So this is telling us that copper 2 hydroxide is not amphoteric. Now we can describe this reaction with an ionic equation. And the complex ion here would be CuH206 2 plus. This is a transition metal complex that forms when copper 2 plus ions are dissolved in water. So we can write our ionic equation as either Cu2+, plus, and this is aqueous, plus 2 OH- minus ions, which is also aqueous, forming the pale blue precipitate, which has the chemical formula CuOH in brackets 2. And this is a solid, so as a state symbol S. And we can also write this ionic equation as Cu H2O6. And this has a 2 plus charge. And this will react with, again, 2 OH minus ions. To form copper 2 hydroxide, which would have the following formula CuOH2 H2O4 and it has four waters here because the coordination number must still be six during this reaction and when we bond two OH minus ions to the copper two plus we kick out two waters so that's my other product and I'm going to put in the state symbols, AQ for both reactants, S for my precipitate, and L for water. Now we just formed an insoluble blue complex when we took some Cu2 plus ions, or more correctly, CuH206 2 plus ions, and added some aqueous sodium hydroxide. So we're just doing that again here. But this time, we're going to add excess ammonia. And by adding excess ammonia solution, we are going to form a new soluble complex, which is a deep blue color. And here, we are swapping ligands, and we are swapping ammonia ligands with water and hydroxide ligands. Now the result of this ligand exchange reaction where we've exchanged or swapped hydroxide and water ligands 
for ammonia ligands, NH3 ligands, is a change in colour for our complex because the DD level split in energy has changed when we've introduced these ammonia ligands. Now ammonia solution is also commonly known as ammonium hydroxide. So we could carry out this same experiment without the presence of sodium hydroxide. So for example, we could put a few drops of copper sulfate into the test tube and then add a few drops of ammonia solution or ammonium hydroxide and this would form the pale blue precipitate, the copper hydroxide precipitate. And then by adding excess ammonia or ammonium hydroxide, we would get the deep blue solution. And this deep blue solution, this soluble complex, has seen a swap hydroxide and water ligands for ammonia ligands. And the result of exchanging these ligands is that the DD level split in energy has changed, so has the frequency of light absorbed, and so has the colour of this complex. So now let's look at some ionic equations to represent the reactions that have taken place. So if we put some copper sulfate solution into a test tube, that contains the following ion, Cu H2O in brackets 6, 2 plus. Now when we added sodium hydroxide solution, the following reaction takes place. Cu H2O in brackets 6, 2 plus plus 2OH minus forms a pale blue precipitate, which is copper hydroxide, which we can write as Cu, OH in brackets 2, H2O in brackets 4, plus two water molecules, 2H2O. And what we've done here is we've kicked out two of the water ligands that surround the copper 2 plus ion and replaced them with hydroxide ions as ligands. Now both the coordination number and the oxidation state does not change in this reaction. The oxidation state of copper is still plus 2 and the coordination number is still 6 because in CuH2O in bracket 6, 2 plus, we have six ligands surrounding the copper 2 plus ion, and there are six coordinate bonds that form, and in CuOH in brackets 2, H2O in brackets 4, there are still six coordinate bonds bonded to the copper 2 plus ion. Now when we add excess ammonia solution, the following reaction takes place. CuOH in brackets 2, H2O in brackets 4, reacts with 4NH3 to produce the soluble complex, which is CuH2O in brackets 2, NH3 in brackets 4, 2 plus, plus 2OH minuses and 2H2Os. You'll also notice that we've included the state symbols here, S for the pale blue precipitate, AQ for ammonia because it's ammonia solution, AQ for our soluble deep blue complex, and AQ for our hydroxide ions, and L for water. Now this reaction has seen us swap two hydroxide ligands and two water ligands for four NH3 ammonia ligands. So this is a ligand exchange reaction. The soluble deep blue complex that we form also has an octahedral shape and you can see that I've drawn this iron on this slide. Now both water and ammonia are neutral ligands so that's why the iron has a 2 plus charge because the oxidation state of copper is plus 2 and the charge on the copper iron is 2 plus. Also notice when drawing the complex that 
the dative bonds are between the copper ion and the nitrogen on ammonia and the oxygen on water. So once again in this reaction, the oxidation state of copper doesn't change, neither does the coordination number of the complex. Now we've also seen that we don't need aqueous sodium hydroxide to carry out these reactions because we could just use ammonia solution because ammonia solution is also known as ammonium hydroxide. So there are hydroxide ions present in ammonia solution. So if we add a few drops of ammonia solution, we form the pale blue precipitate. And then when we add excess ammonia, we form the deep blue solution, the soluble complex. Now in the next experiment you're going to see, we're going to add concentrated hydrochloric acid, which contains chloride ions, to a solution of copper sulfate. So if we put a few drops of copper sulfate into a test tube and add some concentrated hydrochloric acid, our blue solution changes to a yellow stroke green color. And this is because we've swapped water ligands for chloride ligands. And if we then add some water to this, the blue color returns because we can swap back the water ligands for the chloride ions. So once again, we're gonna put some more concentrated hydrochloric acid so we're swapping water ligands here for chloride ions. And then if we add water back to this solution, the color returns to the original blue color. Because once again, we're able to swap back the water ligands for the chloride ions. So this slide shows the reaction that has taken place. We have CuH2O in bracket 6, 2 plus, reacting with four Cl minus ions to form the yellow stroke green solution, which is CuCl4, 2 minus, and 6 H2O. Now this reaction not only causes a change in color, it also causes a change in the complex's shape because we go from an octahedral shape with CuH2O6, 2 plus, to a tetrahedral shape when we form the CuCl4, 2 minus ion. So this is an example of ligand exchange causing a change in the coordination number. It goes from six to four and the shape of the complex. Now notice that the oxidation state of copper does not change in this reaction. In CuH2O in bracket 6, 2 plus, the oxidation state of copper is plus 2. And in CuCl4, 2 minus, it's also plus 2. Now notice this is a reversible reaction, so Le Chatelier's principle will apply here. Now Le Chatelier's principle says that when you put a constraint on an equilibrium, the equilibrium shifts to remove that constraint. So when you add concentrated HCl, you're adding Cl minus ions. So that causes the equilibrium to shift to the right hand side, the side which removes the Cl minus ions. And that's why you get a yellow green solution. And when you add water, the equilibrium shifts to the side which removes water, which is the left-hand side, and that's why it goes back to the blue solution. Now we get a similar series of reactions when we use cobalt 2+. So if we put a few drops of the cobalt 2+, ion into the test tube and add concentrated HCl, this time our pink colour changes to a blue colour. Now this is because we've swapped water ligands for chloride ligands. 
Now, adding water to this blue solution causes the pink colour to return because we're just swapping back the H2O ligands for the chloride ligands. If we then add more concentrated HCl, the blue colour returns. And if we add more water, it goes back to the pink colour. Now, these are all examples of ligand exchange because we are swapping water ligands for chloride ligands. And then we are able to swap these ligands back. And that's why we get a reversible reaction. So this slide shows the reactions that have taken place. So the pink colour is down to the presence of CO, H2O, in bracket 6, 2 plus. And when we add concentrated hydrochloric acid, we have this ion reacting with four Cl minus ions in a reversible reaction to form CO, Cl4, 2 minus, which is a blue solution and six water molecules. So we've kicked out the six water molecules here and replaced them with four chloride ions as ligands. So the coordination number has changed from six to four in this reaction. It's gone from a octahedral shape to a tetrahedral shape. Now, once again, just like the reactions we saw with copper sulfate and concentrated hydrochloric acid, the oxidation state of cobalt here doesn't change in the reaction. It's plus two when it's COH2O in bracket six, two plus, and it's plus two in COCl4, two minus. Also, just like the reactions with copper two plus, when we add concentrated hydrochloric acid, adding Cl minus ions here causes the equilibrium to shift to the right hand side, so we see a blue solution. When we add water, it causes the equilibrium to shift to the left, and that's why the colour goes back to pink. So now let's test your understanding of what we've learnt in this video with some practice questions. Here's the first practice question. Read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers. So this first practice question says, solution A contains Cu, H2O, in bracket six, two plus ions. The diagram below shows changes that occur on the addition of two reagents. So when we add a few drops of ammonia, you get precipitate B, and they're asking you to give the formula of precipitate B. So this would be CuOH in brackets two, H2O in brackets four, and that would be our pale blue precipitate. Now, when we add excess ammonia, we form solution C, which is a deep blue solution, and the formula for C is Cu H2O in brackets 2, NH3 in brackets 4, 2 plus. Now remember it has a 2 plus charge because water and ammonia are both neutral ligands, they have no charge, and the oxidation state of copper is plus 2, so therefore the charge on the copper is 2 plus, and the overall charge on the iron is 2 plus. Now, for solution D, we've added concentrated hydrochloric acid to solution A, and the formula of this species would be Cu, Cl4, 2 minus. Now, each correct formula here gets you one mark. So here's our second practice question. Now, this question is in three parts. Parts one and two are on this slide, and part three is on the next slide. So once again, read through the question, pause the video, have a go at parts one and two, and then we'll have a look at part three. So here's part three, the final part of this question. Once again, read for the question, pause the video, have a go at it, and then we'll go for the answers to parts one, two, and three.
So question two says, when concentrated hydrochloric acid is added to a pink aqueous solution of cobalt-2 chloride, the colour changes to blue. Cobalt takes part in an equilibrium reaction, and the equation for this is shown on this slide. Now part one says, what is the oxidation state of cobalt in COCl4-? Well, the oxidation state of cobalt is plus two. Remember, the chloride ion has an oxidation state of minus one. So you've got four of them here. It'd be minus four. The charge on the ion is two minus. So the charge on the cobalt would be two plus. So the oxidation state of cobalt is plus two. Now for part two, it says, what type of bonding is present in CO, Cl4, 2 minus? Now, like all transition metal complexes, the bonding that's present would be coordinate bonding or dative bonding. One mark for that. Now for part three, it says, use the equation to identify the ions responsible for the pink and blue colours described above. Explain why the colour change occurs when concentrated hydrochloric acid is added to the pink solution. Well, the pink colour is due to the presence of CO, H2O in bracket 6, 2 plus, And the blue colour is due to CO, Cl4, 2 minus. And if you said that, you get one mark. Now to get the other two marks, you need to mention that when you add concentrated hydrochloric acid, you're adding the Cl minus iron or ligand, one mark for that, and the addition of Cl minus ions causes the equilibrium to shift to the right hand side. So if you mention the equilibrium shifting to the right hand side because of the addition of the Cl minus ions, you get the final mark. So that concludes this video lesson. So after watching this video, you should now be able to describe the reaction that takes place between Cu, H2O, in bracket 6, 2 plus, and aqueous sodium hydroxide, and be able to write an ionic equation for this reaction. You should also be able to describe the reactions that take place between Cu, H2O, in bracket 6, 2 plus, and ammonia solution, and Cu, OH, in brackets 2, H2O, in brackets 4, and ammonia solution, and be able to write ionic equations for these reactions. And finally, you should be able to understand the idea of ligand exchange and how this can lead to a change in coordination number, as exemplified by the reactions of the Cu H2O in bracket 6 2 plus ion and CO H2O in bracket 6 2 plus ion and concentrated hydrochloric acid. So that concludes this video lesson. So please check out our YouTube channel, Dr. Rowe Chemistry, which has lots of GCSE, AS and A-level videos, and our Twitter site, at Radichemistry.